Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do a, another wrap up video for you guys. I have another five books to talk to you guys about. This, These are books 16 through 21. I just want to point out I finally found my little Tyrion Funko Pop. So he's hanging out with Jared. There he is. He's adorable. As you can see, he is approximately proportionally shorter to a normal Funko Pop. It's adorable. I just thought I'd point that out because I love him. Uh, but yeah, so book number 16 that we were talking about, this is 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awad. Uh, so this book. So I thought this book was nonfiction when I first went into it. That is false. This book is fiction. It is the story of Lizzie, who is fat. And basically it is her growing up and going from fat to skinny to like unhealthily skinny and kind of about obsession and food and body image and femininity and how all of those things interact. I didn't really like it. Actually, I didn't like it much at all. I only gave it two stars. I felt like it did a couple of things with body image that I didn't particularly like. And it did some things that were really like submissive of the concerns that fat people have while also like reporting to be fat positive. I don't know. Mona Awad is not a fat person. And so I am a little dubious when skinny people try to write fat people or books about the concerns of fat people. I did really appreciate that the book went down the unhealthy path or went down the path of how unhealthy it can be to kind of become obsessed with weight loss in that fashion. But I still just didn't really like some of the parallels and contrast that the book drew. So it was not for me. The next book is a book that you guys have already heard me talk about in depth uh, in my review video, and that is Searching for Sunday, Loving, Leaving, and Finding the Church by Rachel Held Evans. I did a full in-depth review of this book. It was a five-star book. I absolutely loved it. Um, that's all I'm really going to say here because I think you should go check out that video, which I'll link in the title card. Uh, the book after that that I read was on a similar note, and that was Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. The subtitle to this one is How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent, and Lead. And so basically Brene Brown has spent her entire career studying vulnerability and shame and how those two things interact. And this is, book is all about how to be vulnerable and how to become shame resistant and to embrace the negatives that come with the positives of vulnerability and that vulnerability is strength and how by recognizing that we can then change how we interact with people in our lives, whether those are coworkers or subordinates or relationship partners, romantic partners, friends, children, all of the people in our lives, shame and vulnerability is something that plays a part for all people and that almost everybody struggles with on some level in different ways. It really brought up to me a lot of the things that other people do in my life that are probably shame-based, but more importantly, the things I do in my life that are shame-based or that are actions that I take out of a fear of vulnerability and how that's not good and how that is led to various forms of like suffering or me losing my temper. And it just was one of those books that I listened to it on audio, but I think I'm going to listen to it again or I'm going to pick up the physical copy or both because there's a lot of good practical stuff in there, but there's a lot in there. So it's worth a multiple read. So I'm really excited to get to that one again. The next book is... <laughs> finally one that I am so glad to have off my TBR and that is Song of Susanna by Stephen King. This is the sixth book in the Dark Tower series. There's not a ton I can say about this book without like massively spoiling a bunch of things for a series that is huge and long and complicated but suffice to say this book is like 500 pages long of just set up for plot. It is literally a book that is maneuvering the right characters into the right spot for the showdown to be in the seventh book. It reminded me a lot of like the two towers in that way. There are definitely cool things that happen in this book in terms of some like Arthurian legend type stuff happening. For those of you who know anything about the Dark Tower video, I'm actually going to le link to Chris Rhodes's video that he did on the Dark Tower series. It's one of his most popular videos and I think one of the best series recaps slash kind of descriptions of how the Dark Tower series functions as a whole. But there's some really cool Arthurian legend stuff that kind of spans the series that got amped up in this book. There's also some weird stuff in this book that goes on like meta textually with Stephen King as like a character. That's a well-known thing that happens in this series. But this is the book where that like really starts to become a thing. And like, I don't know, my husband says it gets kind of worse from this book because he's actually finished the whole Dark Tower series. But yeah, so anyway, that means that we are finally here. We're finally onto this bad boy, The Dark Tower, The Dark Tower. This is book seven. 
it's uh how long really fucking long over a thousand pages so great that's fantastic but i am down to the last book in the series that has been plaguing my life for literally half a decade which i know is small potatoes for some people when it comes to the series but still too long ready to get on to book number seven just finished book number six and the very last book that i finished in this round number 20 is actually a graphic novel and that is descender volume three singularities descender is written by jeff lemire and illustrated by dustin Gwynn. i love jeff lemire's work i really loved sweet tooth i loved plutonia i really am liking the way descender is going i thought this volume was much stronger than volume two. I really like backstory issues. I know some people don't, but I really love issues or like volumes of trade graphic novels that bind up single issues that deal largely with character backstories. And that's pretty much what all of volume three is. We learn, we follow, you know, several major characters throughout the Descender story arcs. And in volume three, we kind of learn how each of those characters got to the place where we meet them in book one. There is some other stuff that happens to like progress the overall plot, but volume three really digs into backstory and I loved it. Not to mention that the art style for Descender, this watercolor art style, was one that was I was a little skeptical about at first, but is really, really growing on me the more I read of Descender. So if you haven't checked out that graphic novel series, I highly recommend it. Pick up volume one, 10 stars. They are, it's amazing. I loved it. That's it, you guys. That's the five books that I have read most recently. I have another one of these videos coming out to you guys, actually probably here in another couple of days because that's how we roll. Uh, but yeah, also come back to check out this Saturday. It's finally time for Sexy Saturdays. We're talking about the February read of the month for Sexy and 17, which is A Gentleman in the Streets by Alicia Ray. I loved it. have so many good things to say. Tune in for that. Come back, comment, like, subscribe, do all of those things down below. Check me out on social media. Hit me up. We can always talk books. Until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading.